Hey, what's up guys? My name is Tommy. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to your Pathfinder 2nd Edition No Longer Preview. The playtest is right here. Content. This is the spot where min-maxing for fun and profit is going to hang out, but for now, at the request of several people, we're going to talk about how to roll up a character in the Pathfinder playtest. I can't really help you build a really optimized break this playtest just wide open kind of character until, you know, we know how to build the character in the first place, right? So baby steps. If you like what you're seeing, make sure to like and subscribe for more content. It helps out a lot. And literally as I'm recording this this afternoon, this episode of Your Pathfinder 2nd Edition content was brought to you in part by our newest patron, literally just signed up, Michael Aguidi. My friend, I really hope I said your last name correct. I feel like I may not have, and I apologize. I'll see you in the Discord. Chew me out there. No set in. Okay, so today, we're going to build ourselves a Goblin Paladin. Seems like fun, right? They get a Charisma boost now. They've got this cute little voice. Oh, it's so amazing. And we're going to use this form fillable PDF that I've found. I'll put a link in the description. And big thanks to, I guess I didn't find it, I should say that. Big thanks to the Interplanar Crossroads for digging this out. It's been really helpful and i'm really glad i have it it makes teaching you guys a lot easier anywho our ancestry is goblin and as we pop open that rule book we see that the goblin has six hit points its size is small its speed is 25 feet it's got an ability boost which means a plus two to its dexterity and its charisma and one for free with an ability flaw a minus two to its wisdom the languages they speak are common in Goblin, though of course I definitely hand wave a lot of these in my games. If your Goblin happened to be raised by like orcs or something, then it probably speaks orcish instead of Goblin, but whatever. If your Goblin has 14 intelligence or higher, no longer it's an extra language for the modifier you begin with in your inch. Now it's if you're at 14 or higher, you begin play speaking Draconic, Dwarven, Knoll, Gnomish, Halfling, or Orcish. Again, you might be able to get a little hand wavy on this one. Talk to your GM. Your traits are goblin and humanoid, and you have dark vision with seemingly no range. Just as far as you can see, you see in black and white in the dark. Super strong. Definitely one of the most powerful of senses and racial traits and things you can get. Like, you can't really scout without dark vision, in my opinion. But neither here nor there. We're not worried about that right now. We're worried about putting stuff together. So this video isn't, again, it's not going to be about optimization. It's going to be just rubber meets the road getting you to the table. We'll get the rest from there. First, again, it's baby steps. Like I said, in my temporary hit point box, I've jammed six to note my racial hit points. We'll talk more about that in a second. We've got a boost to our dexterity, which means our dexterity is 12 and our charisma is 12. Why, you ask, though? Because in the playtest, all of your ability scores start at 10 and we build up from there with these ability boosts we receive from our class, our ancestry, our background, and some freebies at the end as well. Of course, you can still roll for stats and then apply these. The playtest rulebook says roll 4d6, drop lowest, and then loop forward the same way, basically, instead of starting at 10, but we're going to go the standard way for now. So we see that my dexterity and my charisma both, if I would just press enter and make that a 12, not a 12, 12, that's too high. Goblins can't be that pretty. There we go. Are both at plus one. We receive a negative to our wisdom. That's our ability flaw, but we have one freebie, and I don't like being mind controlled. I don't like failing will saves. It, it feels bad, personally. So I'm gonna put my boost in the same place where my flaw goes, so they cancel each other out, and I remain at 10. Seems good, right? My size is small. We won't talk about mechanically what that means right now. We can worry about that later. And my speed is 25 feet. I still have no idea where that goes on this character sheet. I don't see anywhere conveniently where I should be. Speed, right here. As I continue to scroll down, I see nothing at all. Do I put it in coins, general feats, resonance? None of that. Okay, fair enough. Uh, that's Those are spells. I don't think it goes there. Okay, so what's going to happen here is my goblin is going to have a very classic traditional goblin known. Speed 25. That's a good name. That's, that's, my dad had that name. Actually, I'm named after my dad. Speed 25, don't you know? It's, it's a classic goblin name, right? We can't argue with that. And the last thing we have to decide from our ancestry is one... Ancestry feet. There are several of them. A lot of them are pretty cool. We'll go in more depth as to what these are, what they do, things of that nature. As the playtest rolls forward, as we start doing like the Forgotten Race Review 2nd Edition. I don't know. What am I going to call that? The Forgotten Race Review 2. Electric Boogaloo. No, I can't do that. I made that joke already. But anywho, 
We're going to pick one. We're going to pick... What are we going to pick? What seems good for us? Let's pick Rough Rider. Rough Rider seems pretty good. It seems actually really relevant for all the mounted characters, and your paladin might do that. You might even archetype into Cavalier. Who knows? Not going to worry about that too in-depth right now. We're just going to go right here. We're just going to jam Rough Rider. That's us. Oh, yeah. It's actually a really relevant feat. I wish my ranger had been a goblin and not a half-elf because that feat's really necessary for mounted characters, for sure. Anywho, that's all we need from our ancestry at the moment. So next, we're going to talk about backgrounds. Shabam! Backgrounds are essentially the thing that flavors our character. They're kind of like traits in Pathfinder First Edition, just a little less powerful, a little more build the character, a little less optimize the character. So more or less what's going on here is pick two ability boosts. One must be X or Y, pick a skill feat, pick a lore, and that's your background. They're very easy to brew up, very easy to just slap together to make whatever it is you want to make to make your character your character. Our goblin paladin is going to choose Acolyte. Acolyte seems super relevant for us because, you know, paladins like religion and stuff. And now that we're a little zoomed in on real small text, we can see that Acolyte gives us two ability boosts. One must be con or whiz. The others, again, free. We get the student of the canon skill feat. I'm not going to talk about that too much in terms of what it does. I will say, though, there's no canons involved. I was, I was sad, personally. But, I mean, it is what it is, I guess. We'll hope for the future. And we get a lore skill corresponding to our deity. So, we slide back over to the character sheet. One of our boosts must be con or whiz. I'm going to put this one in con. Because, like, I don't want to die. Dying seems bad. I need my hit points. The other one's free. And I feel like we need to put at least one into strength because we're a paladin. We're going to be hitting things at some point. One assumes there's going to be a sword and it's going to go at the bad dudes. We want to be good with it. So there you go. Plus one to your strength. Slide on down here to our skill feats from our background. We have student of the cannon. And we've got lore Saren Ray. I guess we ought to go ahead and commit up here on our character sheet. We'll jam our deity as Saren Ray. This is all kind of arbitrary because we're just talking about build-up at the moment. But there's the LG because we're paladins, and for now we have to. Hoping for the future, but anywho, moving forward. That's our B. Next is our C, our class. Rulebook, activate. So, the key ability score of the paladin is its strength. That's where our buff will go. We get 10 plus our con mod and hit points. We're trained in Perception, expert in Fort and Will, trained in Reflex, trained in a number of skills equal to 4 plus Int, trained in all simple and martial weapons, trained in all armor and shields, and we have Athletics, Crafting, Diplomacy, and Religion, all as signature skills. So, let's break that down. Our key ability score is Strength. Our Strength is buffed from being a Paladin, which is important. We're expert in fort saves, expert in will saves, trained in reflex saves. One might say reflex is our bad save. We have 10 hit points. Those numbers are still just kind of jammed there. We'll put our totals together once we're done rolling up stats. Trained with all the weapons, all the armor, all the shields. Not going to worry about that. In the playtest, you start with 150 silver to spend on stuff, but in different settings, different games, different worlds, different GMs, etc., etc., you might have your starting gear handed to you, you might have more gold, you might have more silver, which is the standard now. I definitely made the mistake and thought the Elixir of Life Lesser was worth 12 general unit of currency. Yeah, no, not quite. You can't afford three of them at the start. Sad. We're trained in Perception, and we got four plus our end in skills. We'll worry about that in a second. At the end of the day, we get four free ability boosts to round out creating our character. Now, I made the mistake when I was making Octarian for the Interplanar Crossroads in Broken Universe. I had it in my head that I could assign these wherever I wanted. I could double up so I could get two 18s. Unfortunately, you cannot. The four final ones must be assigned to four individual ability scores. So that's what we'll do now. We're probably not necessarily going to be the strongest boy on the block because we chose not to put our freebie from our ancestry in here but that's okay because we won't be mind controlled that's relevant one of these certainly going into strength one of these certainly going into con i don't want to die one of these going into wisdom i don't want to be mind controlled because like who does right mind control is bad and one of them is going to go into mm, charisma because we're a paladin right we need to be beautiful and there's our final stats 16 12, 14, 10, 12, 14. This may not be the most optimized of arrays. 
but it is an array, and now we can put these things together. We've got a con mod of two, so we essentially gain 12 hit points every time we level as a paladin, and since multiclassing is different, that's going to be the name of the game. We add that to our six hit points we receive from our race, so we begin play with a maximum of 18 hit points, and then an additional 12 every level, you get the idea. We're trained in perception, which means we add our level to our roles of perception. Expert is level plus one, master is level plus two, legendary is level plus three. Untrained, of course, boo, very sad, minus two. So that would mean our fortitude save for the constitution score of two plus expert level plus one is four. Our reflex save is one plus our level equals two. And our will save level plus one is two plus one is three. Now we didn't buff our intelligence, so we have our skills to pick, and remember it's athletics, crafting, diplomacy, and religion are our signature skills, which means we can take those to master and legendary with later skill feats. Not super worried about that right now. But we get four skills to choose. We don't necessarily, to my understanding, have to choose these. We can choose whatever skill we want to represent our character. And remember, we are trained in lore Saren Ray. So that's intimidate. This she is weird and new. We're trained in lore Saren Ray, so we add a one. So when we roll that, it's a one. We're gonna make it super easy and be trained in the things that we can use as signature skills. So three plus one athletics means four, pending armor check penalties, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. Zero plus one on crafting is one, make better swords and things. Two plus one is three, diplomacy. Religion one plus one is two. No, oh, that joke hurt. Anyway. Now those are a little more set up. We're not going to worry about our strikes necessarily, but it's the same idea. You buy a sword, you're trained with simple and martial weapons, so d20 plus strength or dex plus level. Easy peasy. Our perception, of course, no longer a skill. It's just something we use for mostly initiative. One plus one is two. Could be better, but not bad, especially for the paladin, because in first edition we didn't have that, right? In first edition we were just kind of squinting real hard, trying to see a thing. What? Who is that? And we died to rogue. And of course, before we totally jump out here, we do have one class feat to choose. And we're not going to like necessarily spaz too hard about what it is. It's not super relevant because, again, we're not optimizing a goblin or a paladin right this second. We're just putting one together to show you guys how one would be made. What do we grab? What is? I don't even know what's good on a paladin. I have yet to put one together. Let's do... Warded touch. Seems easy. You can cast Lay on Hands in a simple motion without any complicated gestures, the somatic spellcasting, do do blah blah blah. That, that's what we're taking. We're taking Warded Touch. We'll worry about exactly what these things do later. We're just gonna jam it on the sheet for now. And also, I really like the on the right side, like you get this at this level. It makes it a lot easier to put things together. I really appreciate that. And also, you know what else I appreciate? I appreciate when people do things right. Rule book, we require you one more time. I summon you. There it was. We do have our own paladin things other than the class feats at first level. We got our ancestry feat, we got our background, we got our champion powers, we don't have those yet. What's that? That's lay on hands. We can spend one spell point to do that. We're not, again, we're not diving super deep into that. Just that table still exists. It's a very small table. We got deific weapon, we've got initial proficiencies, retributive strike, super good. And that would all be jammed just down here. I know a lot of people's character sheets will look a little different, and again, I'll put the character sheet here in the description. I'll dig it out of the Roll20 chat for Rise of the Rune Lords, which is now Broken Universe at IOPC. And yeah, you guys get the idea. That is how to roll up in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. If I did something wrong, if I could have done something better, if you have any questions, throw them in the comments. We'll get right on them. I hope this was helpful. Again, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos. The next episode of your Pathfinder 2nd Edition preview content, and we're going to do one more of these before diving into min-maxing for fun and profit, because it's a playtest. How can we accurately playtest a thing unless we play two classes at once? That's right, Gestalt characters, same roll-up, next Saturday.